Okay, so this time I want to talk a bit more about projections for, of a line to itself, and in particular, some special kinds of projections called involutions. And we're going to talk about how these are closely related to some of the ideas of harmonics and quadrangles and quadrilaterals. An involution is, basically speaking, an operation which, when applied twice, leaves the thing unchanged. So, for example, if you have a load of coins on a table, then the operation of turning all those coins over would be an involution. Uh, and it turns out that there's a very interesting connection between the involutions um, in projective geometry and these quadrangles and quadrilaterals and harmonic relationships which we have seen. So, in particular, this is a mapping which makes for an involution. So, essentially, it's defined by two um, points of perspective or origins of perspective or well, I'll call them viewing points. So we have the yellow one and the orange one. And also this purple line here, which is the auxiliary line. Let's just see how this thing works. So the way it works is that we always use the yellow viewpoint before the orange viewpoint. So we start off with our object. That's this blue spot here. We do a perspectivity with the yellow object. So we line it up with the object and we see where the where it gets mapped to on this purple line. Now we do another perspective perspectivity of it with this viewing point here. And we find that the image lands where this blue cross is. So far so good. Now let's just check that this is an involution. So if we now think of this as the object, well, if we do a perspectivity of it with it, respect to this orange, sorry, with respect to this yellow viewing point, then that ends up moving our points onto this place here on the purple auxiliary line. And now if we do another perspectivity using the orange point, we get back to our original place. So it does seem as if this is some kind of a projection which has its involution property. Okay, so I just showed you an example of a projective transformation of the line to itself, which happened to be an involution. It happened to have this property that when you apply it twice, it returns points to themselves. Now, that's an important property. And so rather than me showing you an example of something like that, why don't we flip the question around? If we know where points are getting projected to, and we know where the auxiliary line is, and we know where the projection points are, how can we tell if it's going to form an involution or not? Okay, so I think this really is the crux of the matter. We started off with these four points, the object, the blue spot, the cross, the final image and the yellow spot, which is the yellow dot, which is one of these um, origins of perspectivity. And the orange spot is the other one. We also have this purple line, which is our auxiliary line for the construction, but let's just ignore that one for now. So at the moment we have four lines, two yellow, two orange and four points. Now four lines is a quadrilateral, quadrilateral. That means, it sh and it should have six points in total if we find all the rest of them, because each pair of lines defines a point. So there should be six of them. We have four of them so far, but you can also see that there's an extra two points, one where these two dotted lines meet. So perhaps we could fill that in. There we go, point, whatever. 
and one where those two lines meet. So now we have six points on this quadrilateral. But notice, this is the important fact, notice that these new points added actually lie upon the auxiliary line. They lie upon the intermediate line. And this is precisely the condition that we require for the projective mapping of the line to itself to be an involution, okay? So if we um, do, if we draw these four lines in and then we find these new two points, we want the auxiliary line to pass through those points. That's really what we need. And when this happens, if you get lots of other nice relationships going on. So we can always draw a line through the orange and the yellow points. like so and in fact we can mark out where such a line would meet the would meet the um, well the line the thick line that our points are on and it shouldn't take you too long to convince yourself that this is actually a fixed point of our construction and it's not the only one when I say fixed point, I mean it gets mapped to itself under this projection. And look, this point is also fixed. This point where the auxiliary line meets the meets the um, original line, if you like. And there are also many nice harmonic relationships in this in this video in this um, setup. So, if you remember, I think it was lecture number seven I was talking about harmonic ranges and so forth and harmonic conjugates well it turns out that the the pair formed by the object that's the blue dot and its image that's the blue cross is a harmonic conjugate to the uh, point where the intermediate or auxiliary line crosses this big line this main line that we're doing things on and this kind of circle which is the intersection of our main line with the line that passes through both of the uh, viewing points or origins of perspective so basically um, blue spot black dots blue cross black circle form a harmonic range and it turns out to be a necessary and sufficient condition for our mapping of the line to itself to be a involution that the intermediate line actually passes through both of those extra points. I'm not going to prove that, but I'll see if I can convince you. So, um, I'll give you a little bit of evidence for it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change things slightly and just move it so that this auxiliary line is in a slightly different place. Okay then, so let's see what happens this time. So we have this set up here and I've used this, these green lines to show the sort of trail that happens when we keep doing our perspectivities on our original points. First we get to this blue cross, then we do another projection, we get to this cerulean blue circle. So this is not an involution. Uh, it's like the uh, the thing we get just misses where we began from. Um, but also, basically, if we keep applying this operation, we see we get a kind of spiraling effect. So um, if we look at where what happens from different places, so if we look at what happens from different places, you can see that it's always keeping to go, going around and around.